Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. I have a special guest here today and this is my mum, this is Linda. Um, my mum has very kindly agreed to come onto um, the screen naked faced um, and I'm going to talk to you guys about makeup on over 40, over 50, over 60, over 70, over 80 skin. Once we get past the age of 30, we're normally finding issues with our skin and a lot of those issues we have in common regardless of our age. So my mum is actually 65, I'm 43, but some of the things I've inherited from her, so I'm used to having to, to work with. So we're gonna start with a primer. Um, if you've got really smooth skin, um, then, and and your main issue is that your skin looks dull and sort of lifeless, then um, a primer with some um, iridescence, some sheen, some glow to it, some illumination. If anything says it's illumination and it's a primer, I personally avoid it and I would encourage my mum to avoid it because we have open pores, we have fine lines and we don't want to be shining light onto those. So um, I always go for something that says sort of a male, a male, a veil or matte or soft focus. So we want something that's actually going to smooth out the look of the skin. So this one is one that I got in my glossy box actually and I'm loving it. This is the Soft Focus Pore Perfect HD Matte veil so I'm just going to apply a little bit all over mum's skin so just while I'm doing that the main issues and I think mum will correct me if I'm wrong that she has as you can see my mum's got lovely high eyebrows so her brow um, she's got some fine lines on there, but actually her brow is really lifted. Um, we have the Holman jowl, which comes from my my granddad's side, from my mum's dad's side. Um, we're both concerned about our lips starting to disappear and it's open pores. That's our big concern. That's mine and mum's big concern. And open pores, it's a really difficult thing, almost impossible to get rid of. But with cosmetic help, mum has regular microdermabrasion treatments with me in my salon. Um, we can minimise the look of them. But open pores and makeup, they are not good bedfellows. So I'm going to use what I always use on my pores as well. And I really need to buy a full size one. Um, this is the Stay Don't Stray. And this is a... It's classed as a primer for your concealer. But I like the texture of it. It's got almost a slightly matte texture and I find that it actually fills the pores a little bit and creates a smooth finish. So we really just, I'm gonna use my finger rather than using a sponge or a brush or anything because I really want to be pressing this product into the open pores. So if my massive head is in the way, I can only apologize. And this is what I do on my open pores. You can also use some use this on um, if you have some deep lines and furrows in your skin, just to fill, to physically fill the space. And that's what we want to do. Because mum and I, if we don't do something like this, we have like it's like golf ball, isn't it? Yes, it's yeah. anything we do just kind of like sinks. Yeah. yeah. See, I. You can see mine, I've obviously got lots of makeup on, but you can see I've got that dimple texture. Um, the more we do to look after our skin and keep our skin lifted and firmed, obviously the more taut your skin is, the smaller that pore is going to look. But as we lose the elasticity in our skin, the pores start to increase. So I'm actually, see I'm actually doing quite a lot. I mean, you can't really see what I'm doing, but trust me, if I didn't do this, we would not have such a nice result with the makeup. And like most people, mum's got that texture a little bit, not so much, but on her chin as well. So it's all those classic areas where when mum was younger and when I was younger, those were our really oily areas. And up in those lovely number 11s. So this is physically filling in those open pores and those lines, but it's also laying some concealing cover in there as well. So with all concealers and primers, we want to let them um, settle into the skin and dry off a little bit. So while that's settling in, I'm going to use my, one of my favourites, my Instant Anti Age Eraser Concealer. And that's from Maybelline. And I buy probably about half a dozen of these a year, particularly because my daughter now steals them. Right. So look up for me. 
So don't be afraid. People get very concerned about concealing or doing things underneath their eye when they have lines and wrinkles underneath their eye. It's just getting the right product. Now this one is a water-based product and it actually has, I think I'm right in saying, some collagen in there as well. So it's actually, because it's water-based, it's actually gonna absorb a little bit into the skin and it's gonna help plump out those fine lines. It's not gonna get chalky. This one doesn't get chalky, doesn't get dusty and doesn't get greasy. So it's not going to accentuate the look of the lines underneath the eye. Okay, and never be afraid to go back in and do a little bit more if you want. Now, mum is looking very pale at the moment. She doesn't look this pale in real life, which worries me about how brown I have made myself because I look quite brown in this yeah. and I must look really brown in real life. But, um, I'm not saying anything. <laughs> but yeah, mum um, is not as pasty in real life as she looks in this in the camera. All right, so we already, we can see things are sort of looking a little bit smoother and a little bit fresher. Okay, so I am going to go for cream foundation. Um, Mum does use mineral foundation sometimes and I use mineral foundation, particularly whenever she comes up and has microdermabrasion because mineral foundation is easy and safe to use once you've had um, something done like microdermabrasion or a, a facial. But to really plump out the fine lines, to get some glow in that skin, um, I would li I to like to use a um, cream foundation on my mum. So I'm just gonna go and get that foundation a sec. Um, and I think now is a good opportunity to give you all a little tip as well, because I've worked on the beauty counters. Um, I worked for Elizabeth Arden for a number of years, and I've watched people come in and test their foundation on their hand. Now your hand, I mean, mum, if you hold your hand up against your face, it, you can't really see, but actually mum's hand is a lot different colour to her face. Mm. So the worst place to be checking your foundation or trying to choose, yeah, yeah, you could see there. So if mum was trying to match a foundation on the back of her hand, it would be much too dark. And that's commonly what happens. Um, you can check a lipstick, but when you're checking a lipstick, put it on the tip of your finger. Because you look at the back of my hand, my own mottled old hands, but actually the tip of my finger is much pinker and your lip is pink. So if you test a lipstick in a shop, that's fine, but do it on the tip, the tip of your finger, okay? So whenever we are going to check if a foundation is right for us, we want to smooth it along the jawline, okay? So that's one color. And that's what testers are for in the shops, you know, and if you go and look it out looking for a new foundation, come to me and I'll recommend one, or, Take, a, take some wet wipes with you, go prepared. Okay, so you can see where I put this one on before, you can see it. Where I put this one on, actually, it's quite difficult. If mum, can you just lean forward just a little bit? It's actually very hard to see this colour. That means it's the right colour, okay? So that could, probably could be mum in the, um, in the, in the, in the, in the winter, but mum's retired now, so she actually gets to venture out into the hours of daylight. She was um, a civil servant for many years, so um, was kept in the dark. Yeah. It's really noticeable this year. Yeah, you've got freckles. I've never seen freckles before. Right, so, and as usual, I'm using my beloved Pierre René um, foundation, which is available from Pierre René or is available from me. I have mentioned this one before in my foundation video. I very often use a beauty blender, and you know I do, and also Ella used a beauty blender when she did a video with me. I do think sometimes if we have more lines and wrinkles, and we have more open pores, and we have a generally softer um, skin, I think sometimes it's nice to use a brush, a foundation brush. Now, a foundation brush, back in my Elizabeth Arden days, we were one of the first ones that sort of seemed to have on their counter a foundation brush, and it used to be a flat brush. But actually foundation brushes should be, and I love them, flat, but fat. Okay, so not a thin flat brush, but a flat surface. And this one's actually slightly angled, so that's fine. And it looks filthy, it's because I did, it, did my makeup with it this morning, but mum won't mind. So this one is at a very slight angle. Okay, so, wait a second, didn't I? Back of the hand, that's why girls who work on beauty counters always have a much younger left hand than right hand, because we put everything on it. Okay. And when you're using the foundation brush, nice little circles. 
worked on one side of the face. Now, what is great is that you can't see the difference between the, the chest and the face, and that's what I said that um, on numerous videos. Things to remember when you're a little bit older. Um, I am getting that way, but I have got a reasonably thick hairline. Mum and has got, mum's got quite fine hair anyway, but she has got a, a sort of thinner hairline. So don't forget just to take your finger and just push the makeup just into the hairline and blend it through. Because otherwise in bright light, because mum's got quite fine hair, you would see that line. So that's a little tip. Because that's one of the, re or lots of reasons why as we get older, we sort of fall out of love with makeup is because that we do it and it doesn't look right. These are just little things that I'm trying to say to you. It's okay, you can wear nice, nice, cream makeup really enjoy it but just remember just take your finger and there's no that's not masky or cakey at all now okay and again whenever you apply foundation but particularly a liquid or cream foundation give it a couple of minutes never put it on and go oh my god it's so cakey and it's so i uh, can uh, uh, take it all off you've got to give it a few minutes to warm onto your skin and nine times out of ten if you've if you've got the right product for you it will look really nice and it will start to look more natural. So around those areas where I applied the um, the primer, the um, concealer, we don't want to rub around too much. We can just pat into those areas. Okay, so one side of the face is done. One side isn't. Mum's got lovely face, bless her, she's my mum. But you can see smooth, hydrated and this side you can see it doesn't look quite as fresh and that's what foundation can do as well when it's the right one it can make the skin look a lot fresher so let's go to the other side. um always remember and what i always say is your face ends where your boobs are okay so you need to just make sure you don't need to put any extra foundation on your brush you can if you want but just smooth down through. And another little tip, if you feel that this area is starting to look a little bit aged, then by all means, just get a little bit of your moisturiser and just smooth down through. And that will take a tiny bit of the, the, the um, foundation that's on your neck and just blend it all through. So you've just got a little bit of coverage. Mineral makeup that you zhuzh on is brilliant on the decollete and the throat because again, it bounces the light back out and it just makes that area look a little bit smoother. So we're just blending everything in. And as we said, we're just gonna work in. Okay, lovely. Right, now, just move the camera a little bit ago. Something that we very often get nervous about as we get older is powder. And people get very nervous about powder and that powder is going to settle into fine lines and wrinkles. I'm sorry I'm, sorry I'm moving about so much during this video, but I'm sort of thinking and talking as I go. Um, basically, you need to use a setting powder if you want your makeup to last all night, particularly if you are going through the menopause and you are prone to flashes, so we're gonna get hot, we're gonna get sweaty. Um, if you're someone that blushes easily, um, a setting powder can just help everything stay in place. It doesn't have to be have a fortune spent on it, and actually, it's one of the benefits of um, so many youngsters having so much makeup now, because they are all obsessed about powder because they want everything to look really mask-like we can then pinch some of that technology. So anything that says um, high definition, HD setting powder. So this was one that I got in my, this is the effect one that I got in my glossy box, which I have loved ever since. The key to powder when you're setting is do it while the foundation has still got a little bit of moisture there. So while the foundation is a little bit moist and we're going to push into the skin again with a flat brush because we really want to we don't want this powder 
sat on top of the fine lines and wrinkles or on top of the um, open pores. We want it in those um, little imperfections because then it's smoothing out the dimples in the golf ball, okay? And never be afraid with a high definition or a HD or a micro fine setting powder, never be afraid to use too much because you can just brush away the excess. Like I say, try not to lift your forehead, that's it. So really, I'm just pushing this into mum's skin. And again, when we're looking at the decollete, so we're looking at the chest and the throat, if that's a little bit more creased than you like, just pushing in one of these high definition setting powders, again, this can just blur the whole area and actually make it look much smoother. So again, never be afraid to do that, okay? So that powder now has set the foundation, so the foundation's gonna last well, and also it has diffused the look of some of the um, imperfections there. So I'm just going to brush away any excess, she says, with her giant brush. And back again, okay, eyes closed. You may hear or see or read about something called baking. Baking, basically, is setting. They say to make up with powder, but once again, the media has created a name for something and reinvented the wheel. Baking is just putting on a huge layer of powder underneath the eye or over concealer to just set it well and truly and then brushing away the excess. So basically, it's doing what we've always done, but giving it another name, which ever was it thus in the modern world. Okay. Right, so we have a nice, blank, smooth canvas. But mum is looking a little bit pasty, okay? Slightly. Slightly. And I know I have got a bit, I've got a bit self-tan self happy recently. Um, but I do love this product, and I've used this one and quoted this one before. This is the Vita Liberata, which is actually the self-tanning powder, but I actually haven't noticed it having a great self-tanning effect but I love the fact that as a bronzer, it is almost invisible. You can't see the actual powder, but you get that lovely glow from it. Okay, so it's super fine milled, and you can kind of, well, you can't see that so much there, but it is, it, you can see like a little dust raising from it. So I'm gonna use it for a bit of gentle contouring. Now, on a mature skin, we have to go very careful with the contouring because my mum um, has lost quite a lot of weight recently, so that always results in a little bit of loss of firmness in the skin but also as we get older even those of us that have nice round faces like mine the cheek can sink a little bit so we almost don't want to be messing about too much with drawing I mean you know I don't know when to stop so I probably always will but it's it's we don't want to have too much defined um contouring as we get older so I'm just going to use this bronzer okay and basically what I'm going to do is apply it to the outer panels of the face. So it's some very gentle contouring, okay? It's a sort of, it's a nod to contouring the face. Obviously when we did Ella the other day, we did lots of highlighting and we created sharp cheekbones and all of that stuff. But with mum, I'm just creating some color on the outer panels and already because it's matte, when we're bronzing, we don't use a shiny bronzer because we want the light to just disappear into these areas and create almost the look of a shadow. So it actually slims out the look of the face a little bit. And we also, because we have the Holman jaw, but you can, you can have this tip too, just with your brush pointing straight up. There we go. Let's just cheat that jawline a little bit. Okay, and because we've done it with a bronzer, rather than a dark, dark contour, you've really got to stare long and hard to see what I've done. There we go. So if you just look, look away from me, that way, and then back around to me again. So you can see, we have created more of a jawline, and so mum's face just has a little bit more definition to it. Okay, and then just to make sure that everything is nice and blended. Again, we don't need to put any more on the on the um, on the brush, but just move all over the face. 
Again, don't forget the decolleté. So you can see already what a difference that has made, just giving mum a little bit of a healthy golden glow. So, lips. So we've got the, the base there, we've got the, the canvas there. Um, one thing that mum was specifically said to me that she thinks we ought to talk about, and she's absolutely right, is lips. Because as we get older, our lips don't get smaller. Basically what happens is as our face drops from the brow, our lip turns down. So you have the same amount of lip, you just, it's an attractive <laughs> look, you just don't have it on the outside to see you have it underneath, okay? So it hasn't gone anywhere. Um, which is why then if you have your lips plumped, you think, well, how can they look bigger when they were smaller? And it's just because all it does is it lifts. So it gives you back that lip. OK, so your lip hasn't gone. It's just turned under. So we want to pinch back every bit of lip we can. So we are going to start with just putting some concealer all over the lips because I want a nice. Oh, and lips about it um what is good for the eye is good for the lips okay so there are products out there for the obviously for the eyes and everybody should be using an eye product there are products for the lips and there are products for the eye and lip okay and if you can afford both and want both get both but at the very least when you put your eye product on whatever's left put around the lips the skin is very similar we have very thin tissue skin with no natural oil um or um sweat glands so that the, the that's why the the lips, the, the skin around the lips and the eyes crinkles and wrinkles almost younger than the rest of us does because it doesn't have its own supply of oil to keep it sort of nourished and, and, and supple. So whatever you use on your eye, pat it around your lip, okay? That has to become like a religion. And they do say if you do something 21 times, then it's a habit. So never put your eye cream on and then wipe it on the back of your hand or anything. Always pat around the lips. So we are going to try and pinch back a little bit of our lip. So... What you need to do, you think I'm mad, I'm going to do it on mum, is you actually want to lift up a little bit and you actually want to find where all that lip is. And if, oh, little side note, if anybody's worried about my hands because they look pretty horrible at the minute, I suffer badly from um, eczema and I'm just having a bit of an outbreak. It's nothing gross, it's nothing catching, I'm, I'm fine. So, we want to get back all of the lip that we've got but then let's just pinch back a tiny bit more okay so if you start from the natural lip and then pinch back a little bit more that's a lot better than starting with some greater exaggerated lip line and trying to make it look more natural so again I'm going to take back lift up mum's lip Find all of that, you obviously know which bit is lit because it's pinker and has a smoother texture. And with my lip pencil, I'm gonna fill in that whole lip. And because then I have that natural lip all filled in, it's a lot easier to slightly draw above that line. And we're gonna do the same down below. We're gonna go and make sure we follow that lip line right into the corner. I'm filling, always recommend using a lip liner on, an, on a more mature lip, but always fill the whole thing in. Who was the actress who always used, with a lot of long black hair, she was involved in Taunton at the theatre, and Katie, or Kate, some, oh, Kate O'Mara. O'Mara, Kate O'Mara, super glamorous, black lip liner, almost white lips. That's not what we're going for. And she used to wear loads of eyeliner as well, didn't she? And masses of, masses of, um, lashes okay so we're actually giving mum back some lips she can see okay but they're her lips just a little bit more don't worry about having a million different lip liners for a million different colors i think everybody should have a nude and a red okay and the nude goes under just about everything and then the red goes under the red if you want to if you're an absolute makeup nutter like me then have pink and sky blue and every color of lip liner but I think if you have a good neutral, okay, there we go. Okay, so if you just lean in just a little bit, you can see we've got mum's natural lip and then I'm just pinching back a tiny little bit. There, okay, right. 
Because we look at ourselves under a microscope. If ever I do someone's makeup, they immediately do this. I'm going to scare you now, but they immediately go, oh, oh, yeah. Mm. Whereas actually, most conversations you have in life with people are this distance away. So if you have drawn a little bit outside of your lip line, you know, go study, but no one's going to be going, oh, oh, look at that. Most people are just chatting from this distance. So, again, when you're using lipstick when you're older, it's definitely worth using a brush, okay? Even if it's just your first application before you go out or in the day to get that line nice and nice and clean. And then after that, you can just use the, the, the lipstick. So, this is an autograph lipstick. I bought this along with a skincare that I'm going to be doing my review on eventually. Um, this colour is Tea Rose, and I fell in love with it a bit. Um, it's very hydrating. It's got some sun protection in it and it's got a little bit of a gleam. Now, again, the thinner your lip, the more we want to try and get the light to bounce off, as if you've got these massive lips that the light just cannot help bouncing off of. So, this one has a nice creamy consistency, this lipstick, but it also has a little bit of a natural gleam to it. It's not sparkly, we're not, you know, we're not 12. Okay. So with that lip brush, we're just following that line. And I'm not saying you have to carry a lip brush everywhere you go, but it just doesn't hurt on that first application in the morning. Just to get that lip line nice and neat. Another little tip, whether you're a makeup obsessive or you're someone who's just trying to get things to look as neat and as tidy as possible, make sure wherever you do your makeup, just prep a little bit. Have some wet wipes. You know, I don't like them for cleansing, but I don't mind them for accidents. And cotton buds, just have them there. Because then you can tidy up a lip line, you can just neaten things up. So that colour is so pretty, love that colour. Right, so, oh, what I also like, I should say this to mum, autograph lipsticks, I found you this. Um, magnetic. Because how many times have you lost, I take my mother's eye out and I'm being in trouble, but how many times have you lost a lid that is going nowhere? Very impressed with that. Thank you, Marks and Spencers. Right, so, um, mum's other area that she likes and that we work on is eyebrows and whatever is your favourite feature or your best feature, really work on that. Mum has got such brilliant lift in her eyebrows. Let's let's work on that. So, whoop, drop the brush. So, um, mum comes to me and I shape her eyebrows and I tint her eyebrows. Always recommend having an eyebrow tint as you get older, particularly because the outer edge of the eyebrow, as you can see on mum, starts to disappear as we get older because we have less hair growth there. And anybody worth their salt can actually tint. I tend to tint the outside first and then tint the whole thing because then it gives a little bit of definition back. And I do think, I'm a little bit of an obsessive, but I do think a well-shaped brow can take years off us. So I'm actually going to use quite a dark shade on one because I want you to see it, okay? But we're going to look at the difference between one side and the other. If you're not very good with brows, definitely. When I did that, I did a, a brow video recently, lots of different kinds of things, and I would definitely recommend the mascara. It's the easiest thing to start with if you're not sure what to do to make your eyebrows look a little bit fuller. Okay, so. I've done quite an exaggerated shape because mum does like a strong brow, okay? But if you just wanna just brush through some soft powder or something, no problem. So I'm just, just trying to find a bit of paper or something. Hang on. Hang on, I'm coming back. Here we go. So, eyebrow, less eyebrow. Now, whether or not you like the shape that I've done, because I've done quite a strong shape, we have an eyebrow, we have no eyebrow. And I think you'll agree, there's definitely a younger look. So it's definitely worthwhile, even if you don't change the shape of your brows, if you love the shape of your brows, it's definitely worth just darkening and, and um, filling them in a little bit.
Now, eyes in general, eye shadow and eye colours. Um, again, that's something that as our eyes become a little bit more hooded, people get a bit nervous about, a bit nervous about what colours and stuff. I've gone a bit mad today because I wear black all the time when I do these videos and I thought for a change I'd wear a bit of colour. So I've got a bit of blue on and I've actually, randomly enough, put some blue on my eyes today, which I wouldn't normally do, but I'm actually quite loving it. Um, jeans will out. Jeans, yeah, see your mother, apparently she was a, in the 60s, she was a big a blue eye shadow girl. Blue everything. Blue everything. Right, so I will show you what I do and what I do on my clients, okay? If you feel that's all a bit too much, I'm going to give you another option as well, okay? So, this is my kind of stock approach that I do very often if someone has... A slightly closed eyelid and as you can see mum her eyelids even though her eye brow is nice and high her eyelids have definitely dropped a little bit she doesn't have a very distinct eyelid so no eyes open okay so we want to and I've been through this with you guys before we want to see the eyeshadow we don't want it all just to be sat on the eyelid so if you look ahead actually pop this color has got a little bit of light reflection to it a little bit of a gleam and actually pop it on with the eye open. So with your eye open, because otherwise the temptation is to go into the crease and then you open your eye and you think, oh, I can't see it, where's it gone? So actually pop it on with the eye open. Okay, so we've got a little bit of that smoky look on the eye. Eyes closed. So I'm gonna use that color all over I'm trying to keep this nice and simple because so those of you who are good at makeup anyway, I'm teaching you to suck eggs, but I actually want to do something that's got a little bit of drama to it, but it's nice and simple. So I've actually gone for this colour. Now this colour here has, is, a, is a sort of a fudge colour, but does have some gold in there. Now mum's got blue eyes. So with blue eyes, we always recommend eye open using some gold in the eye because it really, eyes closed, it really makes the blue of the eye pop. If you have um, brown eyes, we recommend greys and silvers and things like that. I think I've talked about this before with you, that if you have a warm eye colour, wear a cool eye shadow because it makes your eyes look warmer. And if you have a cool eye colour, wear a warm colour. Now I've broken the rules today because I've got blue eyes and I'm wearing blue eyeshadow. It's just for fun, okay? I'm not teaming those up to achieve anything in particular. Okay, I'm gonna blend that all through. You see, you can never blend too much. Okay, look at me. Lovely. And then we're going to use this lighter shade, which actually is almost like a like a, a soft gold. We're just going to pop that up underneath the brow. If you go for a colour that rather than sparkle has like a gleam to it, like a metallic gleam, you'll get a lot more bang for your buck and it will be a lot more forgiving to the eye as well. So that colour that I've used underneath the brow as the highlight, I'm also going to take here into the inner corner of the eye. Okay, look at me. And that just pulls the whole thing together. Okay, and we will do a little bit more of a close-up as well. So, eyes open. Lovely. Now, if that all seems a little bit scary, not a problem. I really like these. These are... Maybelline, who I'm, I'm always going to Maybelline, I know, but they work. This is the Colour Tattoo 24 Hour, um, and they're kind of the cream eyeshadows. 
that one's got a little bit of a gleam to it. They stay put, they don't go into fine lines and wrinkles, they don't go into creases on the eye, and really just a slick of this, a smear of this across will give you a really nice look too. So I'm just gonna take it on my finger, so you can see the gleam of it there. I closed. And with this one, I would pat it, just pat it onto the eye. Okay, so looking ahead for me. So you can see this one is a lot more subtle. They've got lots of different colours, but this is something that you can do very, very easily. And you can also do first thing in the morning almost without a mirror, okay? And they have lots of different shades, metallic shades and pink shades and gold shades, okay? And then if we want to, we can just do the um, bit we did last. We can take that goldy highlighter colour up underneath the brow, in the corner of the eye. That's a little trick to make, you can make the makeup look super sophisticated. Put that lighter colour up under the brow, in the corner of the eye, and then just blend everything together. And it just looks super sophisticated. All right, so just looking ahead for me. Lovely. So I'm going to do two different eyes. I will sort her out before she leaves though, because that's not fair. Okay. Don't be afraid of eyeliner. Um, unless you like a really thick rock chick look, just go for a thin line. It does just, because as we get older, our brows, our um, lashes can get a little bit more sparse. Again, I always recommend using a felt tip pen. I, for some reason, I don't, I struggle to use a felt tip pen on someone else. So I'm going to use, this one is from, oh, I've got a line, um, oh, Maybelline, Cal Spreeze. I should be sponsored, but I'm not. This is the Maybelline Eye Studio Lasting Drama Gel Eyeliner, 24 hour. Comes with a lovely double-ended brush. Okay, and you can obviously use any color eyeliner you like. I tend to use black most of the time because particularly on someone like my mum, I almost want the eyeliner to be more about making the the base of the lashes, making the lashes look more full and lush as opposed to a very strong fashion look. Is eye open for me? Lovely, so looking ahead, so we can actually see we've got some definition there. Okay, eye open. Now, you can go for a flick if you really want to. Um, I think once your eye starts dropping a little bit, um, the flick sometimes can just exaggerate the look of that. But there's no reason why you can't, if, even if you just want that slightly more dramatic look. I'm not extending the eyeliner beyond the lash. I'm not heading up towards the edge of the eyebrow, which is something I've shown you. I'm just thickening that um, eyeliner on the end. So it's like a very subtle version of like a Cleopatra, okay? And so you've just got a little bit more definition on that outer corner, which just gives that little sort of flick. And then, because it's gel, and you've got this soft pad on the other end, if you want to, you could just blend it out a fraction again, just to give a little bit of a more glamorous, elongated eyeliner without actually having to draw it. You could just head up towards that end of the eyebrow, just pulling a little bit of that product out. Okay, so let's go on the other eye. Eyeliner is a very personal thing. I have a lot of ladies that come to me who've been wearing blue eyeliner for 30 years. They tell me they want something different. I do something different and they yearn for their blue eyeliner. That is fine. Whatever makes you happy with makeup, makeup is just for fun. I'm not saying what's right or what's wrong. I'm just trying to give you an idea, some broad stroke ideas about what can be the most flattering, what could be the most straightforward way to do things. Okay, so eye open looking at me, eyes closed. Okay, look at me, yeah, I'm closed. Lovely. So, eyeliner underneath the eye is another area that people are sort of yes or no about. Um, the softer the better. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to take this, this foam one 
and I'm just going to pat the edge and I'm almost, I'm almost going to take the excess off on my hand and I'm just going to smooth, mum's going to flicker like crazy now, she look up for me, I'm just going to pull it through where the lashes are, okay, just to give a little bit of definition and you can go as subtle as you like, okay, so just literally, I'm just tapping it into the product, tapping it onto my hand and then I'm just going into the root of the lash and if you don't know where to go with eyeliner just join the dots with your lashes and you can go all the way in or part of the way but you can see actually we can start to see mum's eyes sort of popping out now not popping out that sounds gross right and then what I could do if you wanted to I'm just sort of extending right, things had on done. what had her eyes popped out yeah she had to have, she had to have surgery behind the eyes oh. thank you for that right okay you can um eyes closed just take that spongy bit, I open, and just pull everything together a little bit, okay? So you're getting that eye open, that glamorous little look. You're just joining up the top and the bottom. It doesn't have to be perfect. We are not doing peacock drag eyes like some of the youngsters do now. We are trying to just give a nice, soft little bit of definition to the eye. Beautiful. So you can see my mum's pretty eyes now. Right, now... Mascara. So, um, mum is blessed with long curly eyelashes. So she is lucky in that way. Um, those of us that aren't like me, and I must have my dad's eyelashes, um, you can curl them with curlers. You can use the heated curlers, things like that. Do you know what? I, it's my job, I'm a beauty therapist, lash lift. Just go and research lash lift. It's an amazing treatment, takes about an hour. I charge just over 30 pounds for it. People charge different prices. You can have your lashes lifted, which means they have a semi-permanent curl. So they are lifted and tinted. Brilliant treatment that to have. You need to be patch tested. You need to do your research. I scream about it to all my clients because it just opens up the look of the eye. A lot of people have long eyelashes, but they just point forward so you can't see them. So if you have them lifted so they're like that, all of a sudden you've got definition. What's nice with doing that as well and having your lashes tinted in general, particularly having the lower lashes tinted, is you have some definition but you don't have to put mascara on the lower lashes because I, like most people, unless I use waterproof mascara, it just, it tends to travel because my cheeks are kind of getting ever closer to my eye as my face gets fatter and my eyes drop and all the rest of it. Um, so actually having some tint on the lower lashes, I think is a real bonus when we're a little bit older. Okay, so, all right, so, but if you are gonna put mascara on the lower lashes, clean thy brush, okay? So take off as much of the product as you can, and I recommend just almost, we're staining them, almost just rubbing through them, look up for me. I don't want a massive product on that, I just want them to look a little bit darker. So I've done it on one side. Lovely. Okay, right. Last thing I'm going to do is blusher. I think, again, as we get older, we get, get scared of blusher. But um, I recommend on an older skin, and if you're not so makeup confident, do everything else and then do blusher at the end because then you won't overcook it. If you're just putting blusher on before you put your eyes on, you might think, oh, I need all the colour, and you overcook it. Minor interruption then. Somebody was trying to ring me. I think they're trying to sell me something. So I ain't gonna be buying that, am I? So, blusher. We're just popping that color right on the apple of the cheeks, okay? Because that gives us that almost soft, natural flush. None of this back to front three or whatever. No, no, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. We don't need to paint our faces by numbers. We just need to do what we want to do to make our faces look pretty. Okay, so last little tips. Have I got any little tips? Oh, I know what I know what I would say. Um, just finding. I'm so professional. Just keep wandering around the place. This is lip business. 
you want to put a little bit of highlighter in the center of the top lip because it just gives the impression that the lip is bouncing back a little bit more light. Um, now that first sort of application of lipstick has rested in, that's it, we just, so I always recommend putting on like almost like a base coat with the brush, get that shape right, and then build that color. It's such a hydrating colour as well. It's really nice. I'm very impressed. I've not used Marks and Spencer's lipstick ever in my knowledge, and I am really enjoying this one. So there's a good chance I will purchase some more. Okay, there we go. And then another thing my mum tends to do, she tends to have her hair away from her face, all right? I, on the other hand, like to bring it forward a little bit, particularly as we do get a little bit older and some of us, our hair gets a little bit finer. I think it's nice to have a little bit more hair around the face. And this is where our hairdresser goes mad because normally my hairdresser is watching my videos moaning because I'm wearing Kirby grips and then she'll be moaning because I'm messing with my mum's hair. But yeah, I just think a little bit of hair on the face can be very flattering. Okay, and bring, bring hair forward if we need to. Okay, slightly softer look, okay. Um, and there we go. So if that has helped you in any way, brilliant. Let me know any other videos you want me to do. Um, I've still got lots of ideas for myself, but I really do need you guys to tell me what you want me to look into. So if there's anything else you'd like me to do, um, give me a shout. But other than that, say thank you to my mum. Bye, hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> I'm back to me. Yeah, she's so much better behaved than my daughter. Honestly, there'll be much less editing. I'm scared of her. She's, what, me or my daughter? <laughs> I'm more scared of you than she is. <laughs> Poor mother, honestly. <laughs> nice to see you all, guys. I'll see you again soon. Bye.